Welcome everyone to Statistics for Doctors. Um, this is literally the first video of this channel, so thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Dr. Aaron Prosser. At the time of recording this, I'm a psychiatry resident in Canada, and you're obviously here because you want to learn about R, um, and this is the right place to be. It's a tutorial series on how to code in R and how to do what at least I believe are the most common statistical tests that most people will be doing in um, whatever research um, they might be engaged in, as I suspect most of you want to learn R um, for research purposes. Okay, so um, I guess the outline of this tutorial is, there's three parts to it. First, I'm going to show you how to install R, um, which requires that you install two software, R Studio and R itself. The second part, I'm going to show you how to download the files that are required for this tutorial series, and that's they're all freely hosted on um, this channel's associated GitHub, which I'm going to open shortly. And then finally, I'm going to actually orient you to our studio, which is the interface that I use um, to do all my coding and analyses in R. And I think most people use RStudio, which is also a free software. Okay, let's dive right into it. So first of all, go to Google. This is how you install R. Go to Google, search RStudio, and then you're gonna see the first link, just click on it. And that's gonna bring you to RStudio's website. And then I want you to go up to download up here, click, and then you're gonna to go to there this web page and then you can see our studio has some paid options for some fancy versions honestly at least for me i've never needed to use the paid versions the free one does everything i at least i needed to do so click download and then you're going to be brought to this web page i'm obviously using a windows i'm not sure for people who are using other operating systems whether this is what you see too but what you see is to download r uh it's a two-step process install r first and then you got to install our studio so the first thing to do is actually to install R so let's do that so I, I think the easiest way to install R is actually through our studio which is why I'm showing it to you um, so you click on this hyperlink here and then it'll bring you directly to um, a web page within um, the R's um, home page which allows you to download R and as you can see, it's very self-explanatory. The three main operating systems, Linux, Mac, and Windows, click on the operating system that you're using or the link for the operating system that you're using. So I'm obviously using Windows, and then you're brought to a new web page. Um, you can basically ignore these three links. You will not be, most likely, I mean, not be using R for these reasons. You just really need to click the uh, base option, um, which is the basic um, version of R. So you click base, and then again, very self-explanatory. You're going to be brought to this web page with a link that's saying download the, this particular version, or in version 4.0.3, um, for, and then it'll say whatever operating system you selected. So I'm going to click Windows, so it says Windows, and then you click on it, and you download it. And again, very self-explanatory. You download it, you install it like any other software on your computer. And that's really all there is to installing R. Now, how do you install R Studio? So I'm just going to close this. So, R, I'm just going to close that. Um, so once you've done that, uh, you don't need to open R at the moment. Uh, just go right back to this web page, and then download R Studio. So I'm obviously using Windows, but let's say you're a Mac user, you're going to scroll down a little bit, and then you're going to click on this link for Mac. Um, so. Our studio again it'll create a little file and and then if you were a mac user just click that it's the same thing and then you just follow the instructions it's very straightforward and then you install our studio great now before you open either r or our studio i want you to download the data or the sorry not the data all the files that we're going to be using in this whole tutorial series so all of these um, links, by the way, are in the description in, for this video below. Um, so you'll see one of the links is to our GitHub. Um, 
website. And, you know, at least I'm using GitHub as like a open source free um, hosting service. So I'm just hosting all of the files that I use in this tutorial series here. And as you can see, we just started out. So I only got one, what's called a repository. So you're going to click on this repository for all the files. And at least at the time of this recording, this is all that we have. So we got some data files here. And then for each tutorial, I've got a document of some kind. This is a Word document and the rest are actually all code for the particular topics we're going to be reviewing. So how do you actually get this? So you go to this green button, you click that little arrow, and then you download the zipped file, and then you open it up. You open it up, it's in your downloads, then you basically unzip it like I'm sure you've done countless times. And then what you're going to see when you unzip it is this. So you're going to see, yeah, um, at least at the time of this recording, you're going to see um, a couple of Excel files, some text files. You see that Word document I told you for this tutorial, and then you see the R files for all the other tutorials. What I want you to do, and this is going to become very clear in subsequent tutorials why this is important, you want to keep all these files together in one folder. So pick a place on your computer or your cloud service, put all those all these files in there, and that's going to be um, the home base for all the analyses that we're going to be doing um, in R for this tutorial series. And that should just be basically a principle that you always do, or a habit, I mean, that you always get into whenever you're analyzing data in R, is to keep your projects in separate folders um, within your computer and, and keep all the, the files together that are associated with it, each particular project. Okay, very good. And that's about it for um, downloading the files. Now, let's actually go to R Studio. So you click on R Studio, you open it up, um, and this is what it looks like. Um, so this is the interface for R. Now, R, this is what R by itself looks like. So just oh, this is actually R. You can kind of see it's sort of similar. It's got this thing called a console, which you see over here in R Studio. Now that's all there is to R. You basically type in your commands here, and then obviously that's not a real function. So you get this error message, but you type directly um, your commands into R. And what R Studio does is allow you to do this in a little bit more user-friendly way, um, because otherwise you kind of have to copy and paste your code directly into R, and that's just not that. That's a little clunky. So I actually never directly use R to code um, for that reason. And I think most people don't. So um, that's why we use R Studio. So thankfully they've developed that. So that's very helpful. So let's go to R Studio. So R Studio has technically four what are called panels um, or panes, actually. I forget the, what, what they call them. But anyway, um, there's four panels. But when you first open up R Studio, I believe you're just going to see these three panels. You got your console, this is your console, and then you got these two other supplementary panels that have different tabs on them, which I'll be quite honest with you guys. Um, I basically never use these other two panels. I have never really needed them, um, with one exception, which is this panel, um, which has plots. Um, and literally when you make a graph, it shows up here and you can directly export it and save it as like an image file or pdf or whatever or you can copy it um this other stuff i mean i've never needed to use them and i doubt that you will too although you know some people do use them and that's great okay so i said there's four panels why don't we see four panels that's because when you first open up our studio um after installing it it doesn't actually open up what's called the source code or the source so let's actually and that's basically your r script so let's actually open up an r script and then you see there's the fourth panel and this is where you actually type in your your code so um, let's make our first code we're going to say x equals hello world okay so we've made our first code we haven't run it yet but we just typed it out um, if we want to run this code in r studio we click literally the run function. You highlight it and then you click run. And then what do you know? It ran it in the console. And then what do you know? Look, this panel here is keeping track of the fact that we said X equals hello world. And then that's obviously encoded here in the console. And if we want to know what X is, we can just go to the console itself and manually type X and click enter. And then it tells you oh, X is hello world. Great. We just made 
our first line of code in R. Very exciting. Okay, um, what else should I show you? So again, I'm pretty, you know, I'm a pretty simple guy. I don't really use a lot of the fancy functions in R Studio. Basically, all I'm using is the save button here. I use this little uh, uh, find button. So if I want to find or replace things, sometimes that's very useful. Uh, you can replace all or find all. That's very helpful. Um, and then, of course, I use run to actually run the code that I type out here. So to run code, very simple. You highlight, let's say I have multiple lines of code. I have x, y equals, let's say my name is Aaron. If I wanted to run multiple lines of code, I just highlight the multiple lines and I click run. Let's say x is hello world and y is my name is Aaron. And then obviously it's tracking it there. Okay. Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about is um, something more my personal preference. So I don't really like the default layout of RStudio. I don't think it's that um, helpful for working because the two most important panels, which is your source code or your R script, um, I use those words interchangeably, and your console are right on top of each other. And these, both of these can get very long, very fast. So, and these other two panels are more or less um, you're never really going to use or need to pay attention to with the exception of this plot function. Um, and then if you ever need to, you know, if you ever ask for help for something, it'll show up there too. So what I do, what I, what I suggest you do as well, you don't have to take my advice, um, go to tools, go to global options. And I believe this is the same, whether you what regardless if you're on a Mac or a PC, and then you're going to go to pane layout. Okay. I guess they're called panes, not panels. I'm sorry. Um, and then you can see it kind of shows the default. So sources at the top left, consoles at the bottom left, and then these other two things are over here. I personally like to put the source and console next to each other um, for reasons that will hopefully become very clear. So you click apply and then it switches them. So this is a much better layout in my opinion. So one of the nice things of Art Studio is you have a lot of flexibility over how big each pane is. So you can adjust it there. You can also adjust each of these like that, similarly here. And you can also minimize here. So you minimize that, which is generally what I do because I never use that panel or that pane. Um, and then I'm just pressing enter, by the way, here. You press enter, different lines of code. You can basically, so it goes all the way down. It gives you a lot of space to look at your code. Similarly here, I usually minimize this unless there's a plot. It'll automatically come up if there's a, if you plot something. At least I if I remember correctly, it does that. Um, and then, yeah, again, if I just press enter, you know, as I'm running code, it's going to get longer and longer and longer. And it's much better, I think, personally, to have the two most important panes next to each other um, so you can really see everything um, better. Okay. And now, literally, the last thing I'm going to teach you, um, at least in this tutorial, is a purely aesthetic thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, some people don't like this boring default appearance of R. I personally don't mind it. Again, simple guy. So if you go to tools, the global, sorry, I'll go back. So you go back to tools, go to global options, and you're back at this, this window here, go to appearance. And uh, um, yeah, basically, there's some really pretty settings and changes to the I guess italics and whatnot. You can pick the one that, that suits your fancy or suits your eyes. Maybe some are too bright. You prefer the darker options. So anyway, I um, I obviously just use the whatever the default setting is. And uh, but if you want to use a, a different setting, it really doesn't change anything in the underlying functionality of R, but it, it looks different. Okay, that's about it. Thank you for your time. Sorry I'm long-winded. This was literally our first video. Um, but uh, stay tuned for the next tutorials. Thank you. Bye.